Hello everybody, this is Peter from Bergzerk Arcade at BergzerkArcade.net and here we are back again in the item system. Must be a Monday. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start creating a generic form of our IS object category. And another thing I wanted to actually do is to go ahead and go through our scriptable object database. And all the stuff that we have in in here for the Unity Editor. I wanted to pull that out as well. And I was originally going to go ahead and create a scriptable object database editor script, which I was just going to throw all that in. Of course, I would just inherit from scriptable object uh, database. And I'm actually going to go ahead, since it's almost the exact same thing going on as far as displaying stuff in an editor, I'm going to combine the two. There's really no need for an extra script. And the actual database for the items that we're using, I do want to keep this format where we go ahead and inherit from it and just pass in the type we're going to do. Because I have a funny feeling later on down the road, I'm going to want to add extra methods in here for stuff. Uh, right now I don't, but I want to keep that flexibility for later on. And as far as the actual ISO objects that we have, you know, the weapons, and the armor, uh, we do have some editor stuff in here. And we'll have to address this at a different time. We're going to probably end up making that IS weapon editor script and we're going to move it on there. At the very least, we'll go ahead and make it a partial script. Uh, that way there we can have our non-editor stuff in here and then the other partial will have all the editor stuff. We'll do that at the very least. But today I wanted to start creating this into a generic. And with that said, let's go ahead. Now I don't want to actually touch this script yet. I want to go ahead and make a basically a test for it before I actually start editing anything. So I'm going to come in uh, we got our three basic databases. That's great. We're going to leave them. Let's come in. We're going to the item system, scripts. Uh, I'm going to clean some of this up too. I'm going to create another folder. And let's actually make that plural. Let's take all the databases and put them in there. So we actually have what? Armor, object. I don't think we're actually using IS object, are we? I'm not sure if we'll ever actually use it. Probably should make it an abstract. But anyway, we'll throw them in. And I'm also going to go ahead and make another one here. And I'm just going to call this IS Objects. And we're going to put everything that inherits from. So right now we have the armor, weapon, and ISO object, of course. Just to clean things up a little bit for us. And with that said, let's jump into the editor. And the object editor. And let's actually jump back in to Xarma Studio. I like it this way. And because I moved a few, uh, we're going to have to reopen them. Uh, so we're going to open up the scriptable one. I'm going to use the scriptable database one, which is now under database. I just like to have these open for references. Let's go back. We'll go into the editor since this will be an editor one. And I'll create another folder here. And I'm just going to call this test. And I'm going to come in here, and this is where I'll make my first script. And this is just the test for it. So I'm going to call it IS object type. Uh, let's go object database. I'm going to go ahead and save that off, and we'll open that up in Unity. And I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. And now the fun begins. So let's go ahead. We're going to make this a generic. It's not going to inherit from that. We're actually not going to inherit. Well, we are. Hmm. Now nah, let's not inherit from anything. So to make this a generic, we have to come up here. We're not going to be using that. Well, I guess we can just leave that. So we are going to be using generic. And we're going to come down here. And just like we did with the scriptable object database, uh, we passed it a parameter for the type. This time around, we're actually going to be passing in two. And I'm going to use the letter D, capital D, uh, to basically for the database, and a capital T uh, for the type. So the item type that we're going to be passing in. So we're actually passing in two generics here. Then I want to put some constraints on what uh, what these types can be. So for instance, the databases, I'm going to say where D is a scriptable object. Uh, I'm not in the right namespace for this. So let's actually... Get in the right namespace first. I'm just going to save that quickly. Come in here. That's actually not the namespace I want to be in. This is actually the namespace I would like to be in. So I'll quickly put that in, put that here, come up here. 
tab those in. There we go. So now we're going to put some constraints in. So we're going to say where D, which is the database, is of type scriptable object database. And that scriptable object database, we have to pass in a type. And that's where I'm going to put my T because it's my object type. But I'm going to put a constraint in there as well. And I'm going to say where T is equal to an IF's object. So we can't pass anything into scriptable object database that isn't a IS object. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And I could probably do the same here. I'm not sure if I'm actually using this for anything else. I think I might end up using this for other things later on down the road besides iOS objects. So I'm not gonna bother doing it here, but it's one of those things that if I, if I knew for sure that I was never gonna pass anything but iOS objects in, I'd put it in just to make sure nothing ever gets put there that shouldn't be. Great, so we got that done. So we got a, a new class that takes two generics, one for the database, one for the type that goes into the database, and we've got constraints on what they could be. I wanna go ahead and store a reference to that database locally, and I'll keep it private. I'm actually gonna serialize it too. There we go. And let's go check for those errors. Not none so far. And there's a few things I wanna save in here. Uh, the first one will be for the name of the database. And again, I'm just going to serialize them. So we need a string, and I'm just going to call it DB name. Then I also need the path where the databases are stored. And again, it's private. I don't think I'm ever going to change where they're stored, at least not in this project. They're probably always going to be stored at the same spot. That is in database. And let's actually give this a uh, variable a name. <laughs> and we'll throw some, well, I've already told you what these are. I'll have the comments later just to speed the video up a bit. The database is the reference to the database that we're going to be accessing through here. This is the name of the database, and this is the path of where it is. And if we look in Unity, that path is right here. Oops, sorry, right here. All right, let's come down. And we're going to go ahead and create a public IS object database. Uh, I'm not sure why my voice cracked. I'm not 14 anymore. But I'm going to go ahead and take a string. And I'm just going to call it name. This will be for the DB name. And just so there's no confusion, I'm just going to say N. Just so we don't get confused with uh, other names. And we're going to say DB name. No, nope, let's do it right. DB name is equal to N. So when we're going ahead and creating this, uh, which we're doing right here, so when we're actually going ahead and creating this, not only are we going to have to pass two generics in to tell it what type of database and the type that goes in the database, we're also going to have to pass in the name as well. But all these other things are going to be taken, taken care of automatically for us. So the next thing I want to do is take care of the on enable. And of course, let's see if I can spell that right. And in here, we want to do the same thing that we pretty much do all the time in our on enable. That is to check if the database is equal to null, do something. And in this case, uh, what do we want to do? I guess we'll just go ahead, we'll just call a load database function. I was gonna put that there just to end this off. And this is gonna be private now, where we had it before, right here where it was public and static. And that works. I, you know, I like this and I don't like it. I like it because it's very versatile. It's very generic. It's going to work for pretty much every scenario we want. I don't like it because not only does it doesn't try to load the database, and if it can't load it, then it goes ahead and tries to create the database. I would like these to be separate methods because, well, they do separate things. And if something ever changes, it's just easier to have those functions separately. But as far as the actual what it's doing and the order it's doing it in, we're going to keep it the same. But let's come back into our other script. And this will be private, so it's going to return, well, it's not going to return anything. And now I'm just going to call it load database. It's not going to take any parameters in. Let's come up here, and we're just going to call it now, load database. I'm going to quickly save that off. And I want to create another method down here, like I said before, void create database. And I'm going to come into scriptable object. And I'm actually just going to copy paste. I copy paste the whole thing. We'll put it in here. And let's go ahead and start uh, fixing some things up here. 
So we need access to the Unity Editor. We'll put that down here using Unity Editor. Save that off, come back down here. Uh, okay, we got these types of use. So let's just go through it line by line. I wanna keep the string full path because I don't need it anywhere else. I don't need to have it up here. It basically doesn't need to be global. This is the only time I think we're ever gonna use it. And we'll come down here and no longer are we doing a type. Now we're just actually grabbing the database, which is what we're referencing up here, which is type D, where remember D is the scriptable object database. And we're still gonna go through. And uh, now we're gonna go where it's a type D and as D. And again, if you forget where the D comes from, remember it's up here, it's the generic we're passing in, right? D for database. So we'll come down and we're just gonna check the rest here. So this should load it. I'm actually gonna comment this. Load the database or the base. It's all about the database. All right, so if, if we could not load the database, create one. And that's what this is gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, this has to be database. Only if I spell it right, man. Well, to be fair, you guys should be used to that by now, right? <laughs> I'll cut that out. I'm no longer returning anything. Let's go ahead, bring that in. I'll paste this in here. We'll deal with it in a bit. What I could do is come down here and say, create database. And we will need to pass in one variable, it looks like. The DB full pass. So Again, I don't want to make it global. I can just pass it. That means we need string. And I'm just going to call it the same. So I don't have to go, go ahead and change anything. All right, so that should load everything okay. We'll go ahead, we'll be testing this in a minute. So let me quickly look here. Yep, okay, so create the database. Uh, check to see if the folder exists. If it doesn't, we're gonna create it. Uh, if not, create it. That's good. And then we're gonna come down here to uh, create the database and refresh the asset database. So DB, we just replace with database, scriptable object, and create instance. Now we're not passing in you anymore. Can you guess what we're passing in? Well, you get an A if you said D. Well, let's put it in the right spot though. All right, and of course it's as D. And the last one is this DB. We're gonna to switch to database. There we go. We'll go ahead and save it. And let's go ahead and actually see if it's creating our generic database for us. So I'm gonna come all the way over to this one here. And I'll create a new one here. And we really only have two different databases that we can create the weapon and the armor. So we'll go ahead, we'll recreate the weapon one. So IS object database type. Uh, we pass in the database type first. So IS weapon database. The type that gets passed into it, which is IS weapon. Boy, that's a long string. Now I have to be honest right up front. I don't like the way this works. I, I want be able to find a way where I don't have to pass in the type, the database should just know. Uh, but right now, I'm not sure, so I'm just gonna keep it like this. I'll just refactor it later, right? That's what we do here. <laughs> so anyway, it's equal to new, is object database type, and of course those types, we'll just go ahead, copy, paste. There we go, we'll close it. And we do have to pass in a string, for the name. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say uh, weapon test.asset. And to be fair, I probably should have pinned this asset part onto it automatically in, um, in the other script. But let's just go ahead, save that off, come down to enable. We got one more thing to do down here. And I already forget what I called it. Weapon, what'd I call it? I just called it weapon. I don't want to call it weapon. Let's call it weapon DB. DBT, database type. Uh, dot on enable. All right, let's save it off. Let's go see if uh, we blew anything up. So we'll come back into Unity. You love those episodes where we just do nothing but code, right? <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead, we're gonna watch here. We should see a new one pop up here when we start the editor. Bam, it worked. And we'll go ahead, we'll take a look at it. Of course, we're not actually putting anything into it yet, but it's creating it for us. And of course, when we wanna start creating other ones, we could come up here, 
Again, I know it's long, but it's actually not that bad. So IS, armor, database type. And of course, we're going to pass in an IS armor. I'm going to go ahead and copy paste that because, wow, it's just too damn long. And we'll put it in here. And we got to change the name, so I'm just going to call it ADT because I'm getting lazy. And let's just call it armor test. So ADT. We'll come down here. And we're going to use the on enable as well. And this is actually, so we're not going to have to have any of this stuff. Uh, it's going to be pretty simple. Generics are really great for performance. So let's go ahead. We'll start it back up. Bam. We have the armor test. And if we take a look here, it is of IS armor database. And we have same as IS weapon database. Same as the ones we created before. So this one's already run a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I did want to show you how to at least get the database created. Uh, next time we come in, we'll go ahead and actually start moving some of those methods from a scriptable object database. Was that what it was called? Make sure we close this. Scriptable object database. We're going to go ahead and start moving some of these editor things over. And uh, well, we'll just keep going from there. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching the video, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I could be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>